Are you ready? Because he's ready. It's Master Jones! Martial arts expert, instructor extraordinaire, and general clown. He's not afraid of coronavirus. He's not afraid of the bad guys. Master Jeff is not afraid of anything. Let's do a morning workout, folks. So uh, somebody asked, I think it was the Danos, about um, incre- uh, exercises and stretches for increasing your kick height. Well, uh, your muscles will get longer at the same rate of mass that they get bigger. So if you think of um, a bodybuilder trying to build up his muscles, I mean, how much mass does it take to go from a normal diameter muscle to a muscle like this? Well, it's the same to get a muscle of this length to stretch to this length. You have to uh, grow the length of your muscles. So, of course, when you work out, you also want to stretch to encourage your muscles to grow longer instead of uh, just bulkier. But um, the muscle is like a mass, so... As they grow bigger, they will also grow longer as long as you continue to stretch them. But um, uh, growing your muscles or lengthening your muscles is basically destroying them and rebuilding them. And uh, let's talk about that for a minute and then we'll get started. Uh, when you work out, if you, if you only you know lift this every day, well, your muscles will only maintain the strength and the size to lift this. If on the other hand, you know, you do your belt curls every day, your muscles will get strong enough to, to satisfy that duty. And um, uh, the thing is, though, the way that happens is your, your muscle gets torn down. You lift something that's a little too heavy, it tears up your muscle. It breaks it. It doesn't destroy it, but it damages it essentially. And uh, overnight, uh, your the little building blocks come out, the corpuscles and whatever, to, to start rebuilding those. It's like a construction crew that says, oh, take a look at this guy. This thing's torn up. It, um, it had to lift too much weight. It had to stretch too far. Let's rebuild it, but let's rebuild it a little bigger, stronger, longer, whatever. And, and then that happens. And what are the materials they use? Protein. So if you're on a weight loss kind of thing like me, uh, you have to be very careful, make sure you get enough protein in your diet, but as you're packing on protein, that protein will turn into fat if it's not being used. It's another energy source. Your body can use carbohydrates or protein for energy. So you pack on the too much protein, you still uh, end up gaining uh, fat weight. Uh, So the secret is to get enough, but then while you're packing on protein, you've got to get your other nutrients as well. So you want to keep a close eye on your ratio of protein to um, to vegetables and fruits. And me, myself, I don't do bread. Uh, It's just, if you think about it, before somebody came up with the idea of grounding grain and and mixing uh, whatever with it to make bread, we did just fine. The human species survived just fine. So to me, any bread is a processed fruit. Whole grain breads, whole grain breads. Yes, they're so good for you. Eh, They're better for you, in my humble opinion. Uh, They're better for you, much like, oh, you know, I smoke uh, filtered cigarettes instead of without filters. A lot better for you, and it is. But smoking filtered cigarettes is still bad for you. So to me... Even whole grain bread, I've just sworn it off. And, you know, occasionally, yes, I'll have some pizza. And I happen to like whole grain bread. So once in a while, uh, once every few months, I'll have a nice, big, fat, juicy ham sandwich on whole grain bread. And, man, I love it. And I tick up a pound. And um, so anyway, you want to provide your body the nutrients with which to build those muscles longer and or stronger and or bigger. So um, you work out, you stretch, expect it to take the same amount of time uh, bulk-wise that it takes for a bodybuilder's muscles to get bigger. So you do a few push-ups and you look, how are my pecs? How are my triceps? Well, if you do them for a week, you're not going to see a lot of improvement. You do them for a year, 
yes, you'll see some improvement. So it, it's a long, arduous task to get those muscles longer, just like it's a long, arduous task to get them bigger. Uh, they get stronger really quickly. I've discovered just in a, in a month or two, uh, you can really uh, knock up your reps on the push-ups or, or increase your weight, but the, the size kind of lags behind and it does take a long time. Uh, oh yeah, one more thing, sleep is also important. If you're not getting enough sleep while you're working out, training, then that little uh, crew, construction crew, repair crew we talked about, doesn't have time to do the necessary repairs. So you need plenty of sleep. You even need entire rest days. I myself take off the whole weekend. I lighten up on my diet. I back off a little bit. That's when I'll eat my pizza if I want to. I have a few Coronas. I still try not to go over 2,000 calories or so, um, but I'm not uh, so fanatic about it like I am during the week. During the week, I keep it under 2,000 calories and I burn a good 2,000 calories a day that's not even including my uh, BMR, uh, basic uh, basal metabolism rate, which is just the calories it requires to burn a six foot four body of X pounds. And uh, boy, that's another calculation. If you're if you weigh 260 pounds, it takes like 2,300 calories a day just to keep your body running. That fat, you know, your body has to work to keep it up. Oh, let's keep this fat. We might need it later. And besides, it makes Master Jeff look great in a bathing suit. Not. <laughs> and you get down to 200 pounds. All of a sudden, it takes like 1,600 calories a day uh, to maintain your basal metabolism uh, metabolic rate. And so you don't get those free calorie burns like you did. So you have to eat less and less as you lose weight if you want to continue to, to uh, lose weight. Anyway, all that being said, let's work and let's stretch. That's the bottom line, folks. Work, stretch, rest, repeat. So let's open up with a little Tai Chi. And wait, let me see if I have any questions first. This is Julia's mom. Hi, good to see you, Carrie. And no one can French man can't live. <laughs> no can do. French men can't live without bread. Uh, says Mr. Dano. Mr. Dano, you are in pretty darn good shape. So I'd say whatever you're doing is working. Keep it up. And uh, yeah, they will have. The, yeah, they will have the macarons and that Cuban bread. Oh my God! Once in a while, like once or twice a year, I have to just go get a big Cuban sandwich. Or eat some of that skirt steak, you know, with the big buttery slabs of that bread. Oh, I can't do this to myself. It is not an eat whatever I want day. All right, so let's start with some warm up Tai Chi. Ah, you know what? Even before we do that, let's stretch a little bit. Just some basic stretching. Let's kick ourselves in the butt, like so. I've already ridden nine miles this morning on a bike, and so my Quads are burning just a little bit, so I'm going to grab. I'm going to grab my foot from behind like this, and I'm going to do my best to hold my balance and stretch. And then the other leg up, both hands and stretch. Usually, my right leg is better balancing than my left. Not this morning. Good. Then let's just do some perfunctory hamstring and calf stretch. Raise your foot up and lean back. You'll find you catch your calf as well as your hamstring and the other leg. We're not trying to even really stretch, just kind of wake up our muscles. And then let's do our toes. Especially me on this mat is very sticky. You can catch your toes on the mat. Tap it out. So I really like to get my toes woken up and flexible so that they're less likely to catch and hang and twist on the mat. Good, and then some big arm stretches like so. The other way, like so. Good, okay. I think that's suitable to get us started with a little Tai Chi. So let's start with an Aikiundo. Let's start over here. And remember, uh, no exercise works without you. You have to focus and make it work. So you're doing your Aikiundos like this. You might as well be eating bread, you know. <laughs> 
On the other hand, if you come up, bend that ground knee, push forward, bend the landing knee, chamber back, bend the other knee, and come up, bend again, and push, and bend those knees, and flex your arms as you're pushing. Give yourself your own resistance. Then it's a workout. Ah, more of a warm up, but it is it better serves its purpose. So here we go. Up, balance, bend and push. Back with your head the same height, this leg really bent. Up, bend, balance and push. Back in chamber, up, bend, balance, push. Up, bend, balance, push. Up, bend, balance, push. One more, up, bend, balance, and push. Good, okay. So then let's try some uh, Aikiyundos. Same thing. Do your Aikiyundos like this. Right, you might as well be eating Pop-Tarts. So we want to bend, come through, bend your knees, and push up, around, and let your arms offer their own resistance. Aikiyundo. Keeping those knees bent. You see how my head is staying the same height. It's like I'm standing in a, a room that's a little too short for me. I'm pushing, letting my arms offer their own resistance. Those muscles working against each other. And hopefully you can feel a little something in your legs now, starting to warm up. And one more. Like that. Good. Then the same footwork with uh, Uda Foriundo. So we're up, like we're wiping down a big wall. Over, through, knees bent, up, over, through. Note my head is staying the same level in relation to your screen. I'm this tall, but my head is down here. Up, through. Uda Furiundo. If you're doing it right, you should be feeling a little something, not out of breath, but you should see, ah, yeah, I'm needing to breathe just a little harder. My legs can feel that just a little bit in my arms, if the arms are off in your own resistance, and good. Then let's do some Sayu Undo, S-A-Y-O Sayu Undo. So we'll start here, big circle in the middle. We go down, really bend those knees, around, over. And notice how the height of my head, I'm this tall, my head reaches the top of your screen, right? When I'm this low, over, way down, up. So this is kind of an up and down and also a twist. Look the way my tummy is facing. Now look the way it's facing. Now look the way it's facing. So as I'm stepping through, I'm doing this. Chamber, push, step, chamber, push. See the angle, the, see the twist that's going on? Well, almost a 180 right there. Almost another 180 right here. So you're getting that twist, which helps to work out every part of your leg and your core and your arms are offering their own resistance. One more. Just like that. All right, all right. I'm feeling a little more warmed up. Let's just do some perfunctory stretching. 
So choose a lag, any lag. Don't set the world on fire. You should feel it a little more than when we did those standing stretches. But don't overdo it just yet. And then the other leg. And don't worry, Denos, we'll work into really the ballistic hard stretching. We want to make sure we're well warmed up first. And I'm rolling around trying to catch all those hamstrings. So for a front kick, you might stretch just the hamstrings in the very back. You go to do a crescent kick, as your leg makes that crescent, you stretch every single muscle, every single hamstring, like, like that, stretch, 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 stretch. So you want to make sure you catch them all. Good, I'm going to shake it out a little bit. And then uniforms up. Our goal is not to have flexible pants or torn pants, but flexible legs. So feet in, knees out, pull them in a little, push down with your elbows. Now remember, if you're pulling your head down, what you're doing is stretching your back. No harm in stretching your back, but our target today is our legs. So I try to push my belly button toward my legs. Not this, but this, pushing my belly button toward my legs and pushing my elbows down on those thighs. This is even somewhat of an arm workout. So pushing my belly button toward my heels. So you might see somebody with their head way down low and think, oh, that guy's stretching better than this guy. No, they're not. This guy has got his belly button farther from his heels, feels nothing in his legs. This guy's got his belly button almost on his heel, and he's definitely feeling the burn in his leg. So let's pull in a little more. Down with the elbows, push. Good. And let's put them out, shake them out a little bit. And finally, last but not least, knees up over to the side, and make sure we leave a little space right here. So your heel's right even with your knee. And then just a little space. I'm going to turn my belt to the side. If you have on your belt, I recommend doing the same. And I'm going to push my belly button right against my leg. So not this. Oh, look how far that guy's head is going down. Well, he's not stretching as well as this guy pushing my belly button into my leg. I can feel this more than I can feel this. I can't feel anything in my leg yet. But it looks like I'm stretching, right? This, I can feel it burning in my leg. So push your belly button into your thigh. You should feel this in your upper hamstrings, IT band, and glutes. Good. Then you can use your elbow here to push and your palm here to push on your heel and try to get your sternum or your belly button right down on your foot. Now, once again, be careful. We're not setting the world on fire just yet. And you may notice this is a mild warm-up for your arms, too, which is good because we'll be using those today, too. Twist back, trying to keep your spine straight. Good. Then knees up and flip the other way. Once again, your heel is even with your knee, but just a little space right here. And then belly button down to your leg. Press your belly button down into your leg. Again, not searing pain. You should feel it stretching, but not searing pain just yet. Good. Then you can use your elbow here to push against your knee and your palm here to push against your foot and try to get your center belly button right down towards your heel. And then up, spine as straight as you can get it, and twist around to the 
back foot. Good. Then let's do some crunchies. I'm going to flip my belt back around to the front. It's my security blanket. Do I need a belt for working out? No, I just love my belt. When I'm buried, actually, I want to be cremated. I want my belt with me, Daddy. And they can burn that right along with the rest of me and then dump me in the ocean so every time you guys can go to the beach, you can visit me. All right. And I personally have got uh, herniated discs in L4 and L5, so my belt goes right across those discs. So I kind of push it down a little bit. And then you want your heels just out of reach of your fingertips. I can just barely not touch my heels here. And then we're going to sit up only far enough to touch your ankles. If you sit up too far, starting right here, you're taking a break. And then actually also while you're taking that break, you're stretching what's called your zoa muscles, which are not meant to be worked out. They are... Um, muscles that align your spine. So me, myself, I don't really like the regular all the way up sit-ups. You will find if you start here and end here, it is a heck of a workout. You don't even have to go all the way back. Just this little motion right there. So fingers just out of reach of your heels, and then we'll touch our ankles on the count. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten, and two. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and three. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and four. Two, three, four. Crunch it. Five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and five, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. And now let's stretch out our thumb. Belt to the side. Now you might find during those crunches like that, your pecs and your shoulders start to strain a little bit. That's because your brain has tricked you into changing your goal to touching your ankles instead of crunching your tummy. So the secret there is you relax your arms, you relax your shoulders, and to get your fingers to touch your ankles, you crunch your core. Remember, slide your belly button forward or push your elbows up, whatever it takes to stretch those abs. Oh, and while we're down here, let's knock out our first 20 push-ups. So here we go. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and two, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's make it thirty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. Boy, just like your brain tries to trick you into keeping up with that fat because we might starve. We don't want to let go of that fat, so if you starve yourself, yeah, you'll burn less calories. You'll, have less, you'll intake less calories, but then your body shuts down the metabolism, so you burn less. So it's six of one, half dozen of the other. You're doing a lot of effort and a lot of discomfort or no return. So you got to trick your body into believing it's okay. You can starve yourself for three, four days. But then you need to eat normally, like I eat normally on the weekends. And yes, I go up a pound or even two. But then during the week, my body is not worried that I might starve. So then when I do my starve, I drop like four or five. So in total, I end up dropping a lot of weight. My goal is to do it fast. I've come from 260 
in December all the way down to 208.4 as of yesterday. And I bet I'm going to drop more. Um, my goal was 199. Anyway, in the same way, your body will trick you into conserving your energy, your muscles. So you start doing those crunches and the muscles start burning. The body says, okay, well, how else can we touch these ankles? He wants to touch the ankles, but my tummy's hurting. So I'm going to stretch my arms down there. And then your pecs start to get a Charlie horse because you're trying so hard to touch your ankles. You have to resist that and say, no, I want the tummy to burn. So you relax your arms like a zombie and you make your tummy get your legs up far enough to touch your ankles. Same way with the push-ups. Your pecs and your triceps start burning. So what does your body do? Okay, what a, how can we distribute the work a little here? Let's have him do this every push-up. Oh, yeah, that works. Well, it's because your body wants to get the task done with uh, minimum muscle damage. You have to consciously say, no, I want these to burn. I want these to burn. So I'm going to keep my core straight like a diving board and make it happen. Same way with curls. Your body's, your mind's going to tell you you want to do this. How can we distribute the effort? And you have to say, no, I want my body stationary. And I just want to work my biceps. Because trust me, brain, I'm trying to tear down the muscles. Okay, so then let's do some of those, uh, since we're kind of on a uh, stretching theme today. And somebody just said, you should be very, oh, thank you. And in fact, you know what? I am, Julia, because I have put in a lot of effort. And boy, um, you got to focus on that goal because it's painful. I don't mean like pain hurt. It's painful psychologically because you see the kids over there eating a great big plate of spaghetti and, you know, spaghetti is bread. I got to turn it away. I just have to walk out of the house sometimes. And But boy, then when I get to the scale and I see that little slider go down below the tens, which means now I'm in the two tens instead of the two teens, then it feels really good. So it's good to focus and reward yourself uh, psychologically and um, be proud. You did the work. I did the work. So thank you very much for recognizing Ms. Julia. Uh, okay. So our hamstring work. You guys remember some of these. These are really good for increasing your stretch. So the first one, we have our leg out like this. We just prop your ankle comfortably over your leg. And then we bend this ground knee just a little bit. Let me do the other leg first. So you can see this ground knee bending just a little bit. You don't want it to hyperextend. You kind of get to the point of diminishing returns if you let it hyperextend. So just a little bend and then up. And we slowly pull forward and slowly back. There's one, and that slowly back is where it gets you almost as straight, but not hyperextended. Two. You can also adjust your angle like this. Three, depending on what muscles you want to hit. Four. Slowly back. Five. Six. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now let's hold it right there and lift our belts. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and rest. Oh, Lord have mercy. I don't know about you guys, but that was a burn. And you know what? I can feel my triceps burning from my body trying to distribute the work to other areas. The hamstrings on fire. Let's distribute the work. No, just the hamstrings. Trust me on this. All right. Not my hand. Triceps won't Charlie horse. I didn't pound as much water as I normally do, and I might be paying for it with a Charlie horse. So now this knee on top, bend it just a little. 
and then up and one. Two. Uh, three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Let's lift it up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and rest. Woo, Lord have mercy. Yeah, it's on those lifts. My triceps are trying to, to help my legs, which I shouldn't be doing. Or maybe it's just stabilization. I don't know, but I'll definitely be watching it. All right, whatever was the first leg you stretch, let's check them out good first. Hopefully that gave you a little hamstring burn. Then whatever leg you did first, put it out like so. And now stretch it and you'll probably find you can stretch a lot farther. And once again, we kind of rotate, catching all those hamstrings. And at this point, you can push it to the threshold of pain. We're nice and warmed up now. You see how far my foot, my hand is going down? A while ago, I was like this. Now I can grab almost my whole foot. Because I'm warmed up. I've got some blood circulating. My body's woken up. Good. Then let's do the other hamstring. This is the path to flexibility, Danos. Do this right here every day for a year. You may take the weekends off. In fact, I would. Get a massage occasionally. Rub out those hamstrings. You do these exercises and these stretches every day for a year, your kick height will increase. Now, genetics has a lot to do with it, too. You can't fight genetics. Genetics has a lot to do with weight loss, muscle gain, flexibility, and gender has to do with flexibility too. Of course, women are more flexible, just naturally, just right out of the starting gate. And as you get older, you lose some flexibility. But look, man, I'm 56, bro, 57 in December. And I got my fingers almost all the way down. So it can be done. One of my secrets is I started in my teens Stretching all the time. Good. I'm going to shake them out. Shake it, shake it, shake it. And now let's pull those pants up a little bit. We want to stretch our legs, not our pants. Feet in, knees out. Very good. As long as we're down here anyway, like my dear old granny used to say, son, don't never miss an opportunity to do some push-ups. And here we go. Remember, the floor sets your core, then you keep it there. And here we go. One. I'm getting my toes lined up. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight, nine, ten more, and two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's go for ten more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. So now we're over halfway, which is two sets, because we kicked it up to 30. But if you feel your technique eroding, you feel your body 
start wanting to do this, time to just stop. Do another set, do a few more sets, a uh, few more push-ups with good technique. Oh, let's see what we got. Oh, the salas! Wait, Sarita. What's up, guys? Who all is here? Still got the Spangler. Oh, hi, Spanglers. Fernandez is Danos. There we go. And the Salas, is that, is Sarita Salas, is that the um, Reyes boys? You guys tell me in a minute. Anyway, let's knock out some curls, bro. As usual, I will remind you, if you, let me get out of the way because everything's black. There, you can curl your belt over like this. You see, it's on the outside, or I can take it over like this, where it's on the inside. And for these, it's kind of a substitute for regular curls. I like to make sure I do both, just so my forearms get an equal, equal workout this way or this way. So let's start this way. And let me satisfy my obsessive tendencies and get my belt perfectly lined up and not twisted. You wanna get on down there, check your height. And if you guys have a mirror or something, that's why gyms have mirrors all over the place. You wanna look and make sure you're not doing this right and make sure that you're not like starting from here so i want my back straight my hands down there and balanced even and i bend that other knee for balance and here we go let's just start off with minimal resistance one two three four and five and let's switch feet so we work our legs evenly. Make sure your hands are even and your back is straight. One, two, three, four, and five. Good. All right. Set those things down for a minute. And then if you have anything, a wall, a doorway, you can put your hand here and then turn your body this way and stretch out both your biceps and your pecs. Then the other side, stretch it good. You know, aside from wanting to be flexible for high martial arts kicks, you also want to have a range of motion. You know, you see these uh, weightlifter guys. First of all, they're always looking in the mirror this way. So they look good this way in the mirror. And then back here, it gets no work whatsoever. So they develop these postures like this. And then they try to reach for the peanut butter on the top jar and they can't get it because they haven't been stretching too. You want to be able to use your body, not just gaze at it, right? Like a narcissist. You want everything to be useful and healthy, full range of motion. So to me, those stretches are super important, not just for Taekwondo, but just for daily living. Uh, okay, so now let's balance out. Let's hit some of the, some of the back muscles. So I already took my boards and put them away. So we'll do these back pushes. So we're gonna push up like a sit up this way. Now I myself don't have the lat power yet and the back power to uh, fully push myself out without using some, some core and some abs. So yes, you might have to use some core and abs, but just try to minimize it and try to focus on using these muscles 
instead of these muscles to get up. Okay, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So a good stretch for those is this up and around, cross your body, catch right under your elbow and stretch it out. You can even move your neck a little. Should have hit these muscles back here, your lats. And up the other way. Let's do another one of those uh, no gear uh, lat things. So I'm going to turn my belt around. And be careful you don't lose your pants on this one. So let's lay here. And then we'll pull back with our hands like that. If you're on a tile floor, you can also go back. This mat is sticking my clothes. So I can't go back. I have enough trouble pulling forward. So reach out, pull, reach out, pull, reach out, pull, reach out, pull. There we go. And then let's do a little more. Those lat stretches. Just to work these muscles here balances out your push ups. And the other way, stretch it good. Uh, another good one for those is you take your arm up behind your head, grab your elbow, and pull. You can even lean over. You're trying to catch the stretch on these muscles. Oh, yeah, I can feel that. And over, catch it, stretch it. Good. And as long as we're down here, let's knock out some push ups. Now, we don't want to do 30 and then 10. We only got 40 push ups to go, so let's do two sets of 20. So, here, let's knock out 20. And here we go, rock and roll. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and two. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We're up to 80. Only 20 to go, ladies and gentlemen. Cool. Then we can do some of these, uh, I forget what the yoga position is called, um, but we're balancing like this, and then taking one leg back as far as you can. Bend your ground knee a little. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and rest. So your ground leg, the balance leg, should have been really burning right here. Upper hamstring and your glutes. 
The back leg gets a little work out from that. It mainly hits the balance leg. Okay. And then this way, other leg, here we go. From balance, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten more. Ah! Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, oh yeah. Let's shake them out a little bit. And since we're all, oh, oh, who is this? Oh, it's Emily. Hi, Emily. Hi, sorry, a lot of you guys, I get your usernames mixed up. The Reyes's came in yesterday and had another uh, username, so I was confused. Good to see you, Emily. Okay, so since it's kind of a kick stretch day, let's do a little more stretching. Whatever leg was on the ground first, stretch it first. And you should really find that your stretch is maxed out. And at this point, you can really pull on it. And just make sure you feel the stretch in the belly of the muscle, not where it joins your bones. Not in the joints. If it's stretching in the joints, try a different position until you can feel it stretching in the belly or the middle of your muscle. Muscles plural in the case of the hamstrings. Good, and the other leg. And once again, I try to push my belly button as much as I can. Good, and shake those bad boys out. Oh, good Lord, we're running out of time. We ain't even up to 100 push-ups yet, and my belt ain't stretched two sizes bigger yet, so let's do it again. Now I forget, which way did I flip my belt? I think last time I had it like this, didn't I? So this time I'm gonna flip it this way with the tails to the outside. So I'm gonna make sure my hands are in the middle. I'm gonna turn sideways. So I'm using the screen as a mirror. Make sure I'm not doing this. Make sure my back is straight, knees are bent, and I've got a decent range of motion. Here we go. One, a little more resistance this time. Two, stretch that belt. Three, Four, stretch it. Five. Other leg. Even. Back straight. One. Two. Three. Four. And five. Wah! Yeah, baby. All right, quick while we're in the mood. Let's do them last 20 push ups. Here we go. And one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, and two. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Two to the row on one, two. So 102 push ups, ladies and gents. Oh, let's stretch it out a little.
here's another thing. Remember as you uh, remember as you lose weight, lose fat or muscle, your basal metabolo basal metabolic rate lowers, and so you don't get that free calorie burn. You know, for zero effort. A fat guy sitting on the couch for two for two hours, and a skinny guy sitting on the couch for two hours. Big difference. The fat guy burns like twice as many calories. So, in that way, you start losing weight uh, works to your disadvantage. It gets harder and harder. On the other hand, for every little bit of muscle you create, it takes more calories to sustain those muscles than it does to sustain the fat. Uh, the problem is, if you eat too few calories, your body will burn like up to 25% muscle in addition to your fat. So as I've been doing this whole thing, I've been working out like crazy. And I don't see much muscle gain, but I do see a little. But the mere fact that I'm not losing a lot of muscle is good. It's a good sign. And man, I pack on the protein. So I basically replaced all my bread calories with protein calories. That way I can eat the same vegetables and I try to really vary the vegetables and I try to go fresh instead of something out of a can uh, preferably fresh like from the fresh produce aisle second would be maybe frozen but even then it's been processed one time and you start losing nutrients as you process in any way even boiling them steaming them you lose a little bit of nutrients every time you do it so I can try to get as close to raw as I can even raw fish, sushi, see? There are advantages to being on a high protein diet. And what do we got, Emily? And look, we still got seven people here. Nobody bailed out today. That is awesome. So you wanna make sure you're hitting the water. I do not have my vitamin C for caffeine today. I already slammed that earlier. And I, I did pound water this morning, but not nearly as much as I usually do. So as soon as we get off here, I'm gonna pound a little bit more. You will get muscle cramps if you, uh, uh, one of the ways you get muscle cramps is with uh, dehydration. So, uh, oh, let me ask you guys something. You see my little trailer down here at the bottom, my little ticker? I just thought that might be cool. So if anybody drops in, they can see, oh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at eight. Um, for anybody watching the video for, you know, 10 seconds or longer. So is that distracting to you guys? If it is, I'll of course take it off because the primary uh, goal here is to have a good workout. If it doesn't bother you though, I'll leave it because people all the time will say, oh, what time is next time? And it's right there. Uh, good workout, thanks. Good, good, Danos. And I hope that answers your uh, hamstring questions. And um, I'm no, I'm definitely no uh, super, expert on, on uh, physiology, nutrition, fitness, but I have picked up a lot along the way in martial arts. Martial arts is not a sport, but it unavoidably has athletic components. And so if you don't get into that enough, you'll hurt yourself badly in martial arts. So Danos, yes, I have a lot of experience with stretching as evidenced by a 50, almost 57 year old man who can still reach almost to my heel. It's because I've maintained, worked those hamstrings over and over and over for 30 years. And it don't happen overnight, but it does happen. Many thanks, great, okay, cool. Good guys, I am so happy um, that this helps you guys and trust me, it helps me too. You know, I, I tell you guys something and then I catch myself doing the same thing, you know, trying to uh, to spread out the effort over my whole body to divide the um, the duties. And then uh, since I've just told you guys that, then I have to say, no, 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 no. I have to keep my mind on what I'm doing, knock out those hundred all the way down. So you guys hold me accountable too. So many thanks for showing up and I am... Out of here. See you later, guys.
This has been a self planning type of the live stream with Master Death. Before practicing the techniques, you're live stream with Master Death. I'll run stone, slosh, tipsy, buzz, blotto, slammed, plowed, jolly, play, I'd hammered, wasted, degraded, or otherwise intoxicated. Watching live stream with Master Death, you renounce the possibility of it. We've all wired up before you went on the last direction of simple fracture, broken over the computer, video, dislocation, strain, restrain, rest, hyperextended elbow, broken ribs, bruising, or bleeding, care, strains, fractures, dislocated shoulder, or concussion. All rights reserved. Unauthorized presentation and publications frequently prohibited.